Bandwidth for all shows on the Aussie Tech Heads network is supplied by Aussie Tech Heads web hosting for a fast, affordable and reliable Australian server with fantastic support. Contact Aussie Tech Heads web hosting at aussietechheads.com.au. Aussie Tech Heads, Australia's best hosting service. time of the week again. Yes, another episode of Aussie Tech Heads, the episode you've been waiting for. Why? I don't know, because it's just another episode. You're going to hear the latest news, the latest views, and a bit, maybe a rant or so. We'll see how we go, eh? See how we go. Now, uh, we're hosts tonight. We're, we're down two. We're down Jace, who's off working at night, and we're down with Will. Will's got internet problems aplenty. Trouble is afoot, and uh, we think we know why, and it's because of a cut cable. We're going to get to that story later on, but uh, apparently Optus is uh, not delivering a fast enough speed because someone's cut their cable. So but what we do have for you tonight, and as always brought to you by Aussie Tech Heads Web Hosting at athwebhosting.com.au, we have, who's on the screen first? It's Shane. Hello, Shane. Hello, people. How are we? Good. What have you been up to this week? Anything exciting? No, just going for a couple of job interviews. I um, I took on board the feedback last week and rearranged the, the, the study that I'm in. So you'll notice that I've got a different setup this week. Nice. I might tweak it again next week. Uh, uh, what else happened? Um, just still trying to settle into the to the house proper, and still got the odd tradie coming in and out and doing things in the house, cool. and other than that, same dog, different leg. Yep. Oh, good stuff. Now in the other corner, in storm ridden Sydney, Eric, how are you going? Mm, very well. Storms have no storms this evening yet. Uh, we were expecting some, but um, last three nights we've had them. Yeah, and pretty bad ones, I I believe. Is this, is yes, this true? Yes, yeah, very hot during the day and then stormy at night, which I actually don't mind. No. It's nice to sleep when it's raining. Oh, that's right. Well, we've been praying for rain up here, like on the Gold Coast. Well, you know, my lawn, there's probably, you would have to say three quarters is just dirt. It's just, just gone to dirt. So, you're, um, like a, you're like a cricket pitch in India. Well, yes. So I've been out there with the hose the last couple of days, and I thought there's there's no there's not no good news in a full tank of water. So I thought I'll start using it. You know, no good because it'll it'll rain soon enough. It'll fill it back up. So anyway, all right. Now uh, look, any emails this week? Uh, doesn't look like anything to mention much. Or oh, there's one for the Aussie Max Zone. The Aussie, don't forget the Aussie Max Zone. That's on iTunes as well. But uh, nothing to mention much. Just just you know the the normal thousand of how good we are. That sort of stuff. You know. Nothing's changed. Another, another normal week. <laughs> All right. Now, let's get on with the first little story, hey? And I'll tell you what's new with me. How about we start off with me first? Yes. Okay. I had a purchase this week. Now. Oh. Yes. <laughs> it leads into the first story uh, because the first story is Microsoft dominates the two-in-one shipments in Australia. So how do you like those apples? So now we're looking at the... You know, the two-in-ones, you know, the, the laptops, the two-in-one laptops, which are yes. the convertibles, they're a laptop, they're a tablet, they're – and every, everything in between. So apparently Microsoft is the clear leader in the two-in-one computer shipments in Australia with the with taking a 69% share of the shipments in the third quarter. So that's not that's not bad. Look, I can't believe well, I, that that's not a bigger <laughs> – not the, that uh, two-in-ones aren't – you know, just powering along. I, I reckon they're the best thing out. That this is this is these are going to kill the tablet. So, tada, iPad. Uh, you know, you bring them out with a keyboard. Uh, uh, Aces is the next closest with 13% of shipments. Uh, Toshiba is ranked third, and then followed by Acer with 3%. And Lenovo, with how much is Lenovo? Oh, 3% with Lenovo. 7% with uh, no, what's it say? Acer with 3%, and Lenovo with 2%. There we go. So the two-in-one shipments were 76-odd thousand in the third quarter of 2014, uh, according to IDC. Now, this is where my part of the story comes in. Look. Look at that. Lenovo. I'm one of the 2%. Did you get a yoga? I did. I, I, you got a silver one. Yeah, I did. I didn't like the orange one. Look. How's that? Mm. Hey? 
Yeah, Too bad your resolution's so bad I can't hardly see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'll have to watch it back on the on the on the video, on the YouTube. So the good thing, so this is the Yoga 2 Pro i7. Did you do did you do an unboxing? No. This is it. <laughs> no. No. Well, I did take right. a photo of the box, so I might right. do that later. But uh, look, so it's a tablet and I mean it's a laptop and then a tablet. How good's that? Very good. How good is that? Now, you'd have to look at the video for those on the audio, but it, it flips right around, so, you've just, so you can use that as a tablet. Now, what I've been doing, I've been using it in stand mode, you know, and just do it like that, plop it on the desk, yeah. and you've got it in stand mode, like that. Oh, well, aren't you a legend? Yeah, so that's pretty good, isn't it, eh? How good is when that? When you um, bend the bat like that, does that disable the keyboard? Yep. <laughs> Nothing happens. Yep. And it's just all touch screen, and then... Comes back into laptop. Yeah, yeah. And the keyboard comes on, backlit keyboard, as you can see. Very nice. All right. So what was the damage on that? Well, that was a the thing. There's uh, – what have I gone? I've turned down for some reason. Now, hang on, just two secs. I'll just twiddle a couple of leads. How does that sound? Good. Good. Okay. For some reason, I was booming, and then all of a sudden, it's just all gone a bit soft. So I hope that that's okay. But anyway, okay, let's let's say let's talk let's talk <laughs> dollars. Patient for that too. <laughs> let's talk, <laughs> let's talk dollars. Um, yeah, oh, Lenovo. Now look, they had them for around about uh, eighteen hundred, something like that, and they did have a couple of deals on Cyber Monday. But there was a guy on eBay for fifteen hundred. Oh, you got it off him? I did. I did. I did get it off of eBay, uh, so save yourself 300-odd. What's, what's the screen size on that again? 13. It is a 13. I think it was, yep. Uh, 8 gig, 256 hard drive, i7. So, yeah, it's all, it's all, it's all systems eight, go. 8 gig enough? I think so, yeah. It's enough for me. Well, I'm not going to use it. It's not meant to be a production machine sort of as, right. as such. It's just a laptop where I can just sit around and, and say, access files off my server and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, that's yeah. Good. yeah, it's good enough for me. So, yeah, so that's the, the big news. That was good. So it, it's, and, it, and it's light? Yes, I think it's about one, uh, 1.5 kilos, something like okay, that. That's pretty good. And what about the hinges? Do they look sturdy? Yeah, they, it, feels, it feels sturdy. Like, it feels nice and, and yeah. yeah Lenovo are a good quality machine. If I was to buy a laptop... A, a, um, and go to the dark side and buy a laptop, I would probably buy a Lenovo. Yeah, so like the thing now, I'm just looking now, that it's actually I'm utilising Windows 8 in, ta in, a, in a tablet mode. You know, I'm just now starting to search through the store, you know, the, the app store, Windows app store to see what I can get. There's not a lot of apps around that I've, I've got on the iPad. Uh, so things like the ABC News you know, there's nothing like that, but it'll come. It'll come in time. So it, yeah, they've had a while, though. They should have really hurry up. Yeah, I, look, I agree with that too. I think that people should be, but I think, and that's why this story. I picked this story out because if Surface is dominating two-in-one shipments, they're they're smashing it with 63% of the market. If this is replicated overseas, well, then people are going to start saying, okay, well, we're going to have to start producing apps for the, for the Windows as well. I so, think that you'll find that the sort of computer that you bought will overtake Surface because um, the Surface has got a dodgy stand. You know, you can't sit on your lap without it falling over and whatnot. So I think the Surface um, 3, because they've got it right this time with the operating system and the specs, is what the iPad was when it first came out in 2010. You know, you want it, but you don't really need it. Mm. If you go and grab it anyway because it's new and it's shiny and it's fresh and it's light and it looks good. Yeah. But then you get it and you can't do much with it because there's no apps for it. You know, the app store is pretty basic, pretty bare. But that will improve over time, hopefully. Yes. Uh, but I think that's where the surface is. I think your computer, the one you bought, is going to be over, over a long or medium term, is going to be more successful than the actual surface. Yeah, well, I, I would agree with you, obviously, again, of course, I just bought one. But the surface, to me, the keyboard was too flimsy. Like, it couldn't, yep. it couldn't stand up really by itself. It, it yep. needed the kick at the back. The to kick. me, it was more of a... It's, it was more of a tablet with a keyboard attached. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Rather than a, rather than a computer that turns into a tablet. 
Yes. Which is what yours is. Yes. And like, you know, it's uh, 1.5 kilos. It's not the lightest thing in the world, but if you wanted lighter, you just go for a lesser screen, lesser size screen, which those ones, yeah. I, I've picked up an 11, 11 inch, and they are light. You know, they are really light. But yeah, this thing, this thing I is... I think um, they're overpriced too, the Surface. I mean, you, what you got is bang for buck. It's a good quality unit. It actually is a laptop mm. that can, be, can double as a... Well, it's got the grunt. As a tablet, whereas yeah. the other one is essentially a tablet and someone's gone, oh, look, why don't we throw a keyboard on there and then we can call it a laptop? But it's not. It's not really a laptop. No. And it's, and it's expensive for what it is. Yeah, that's right. But I'm just happy to see that the Surface is, is killing it in just because it's on Windows 8.1. So, therefore, yeah. it's going to, <clears throat> going to attract more, hopefully more interest from, from developers and, yeah, and go, and go for it. Like, the, the, apps are, the apps are pretty good, the ones that I've got, but you're just going to search around and I'm going to keep searching and find the ones that I like. So, yeah, oh, look, you, you'll find the ones you like. And look, at, like you said, it's not a production machine. You throw a spreadsheet on there. You'll, you know, you'll, you'll watch some streaming videos if you need to. You'll access your server at home. You, know, you, yeah. got, you can get Skype on there. You know, it's all that stuff that you use on a day-to-day basis. Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. Um, now, did you, uh, what have, Eric, have you come across any Apple stories this week? I have. Oh. I have, and you all missed it, and I thought you'd have it. Oh no! Well, what? not not the, not the uh, surprise reappearance of Steve Jobs. No, no. no, no <laughs> Did no. you hear about that? Yep, heard about that. I will listen to your podcast um, the other day. Thank God you were on it. Oh, that's good. That's uh, on iTunes. Yep. All right. So that was uh, always entertaining when you're on it. It went for a little longer. The Aussie Max Zone this week. Yes, it did. Well, that's all right. When it's when it's good, you don't mind how long it goes for. When it's bad. Any podcast, you can't wait for it to finish. Yes. <laughs> That's right. The, the little fast forward button comes in handy. Oh yeah. yeah. And I haven't even got ads to skip, but I'm still fast forwarding. <laughs> All right. What's your Apple story All this right. week? Apple is working on a new technology that will protect your smartphone when you drop it. Oh, is this another rumor, or is this right? No, no, no. Not a rumor. The tech giant has secured the rights to patent from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office for the protective mechanism for an electronic device. So that's what they've called it. The patent, which was approved this week, is for an electronic device that has a motion sensor that detects when the device is in free fall. Mobile electronic devices are being used more and often, more and more often, blah, blah, blah. However, people may drop their mobile electronic devices or mobile, um, or the mobile electronic devices may otherwise be caused to enter a free fall state. It used the example of, I'll go again, that's all bull, bull crap. Um, <laughs> so the proposed patent works by internal by an internal vibrating sensor alert that repositions the phone in midair so it lands on a less vulnerable point. Right. There you go. So it's just, it's quite simple really because you know when you you know those knives these the, you know those world world balanced knives yeah. like that they use in the circus doesn't matter how you throw them they always land point first. Oh really? Okay, because that's the that's because that they're balanced properly. They're balanced to, to be heavier at the end. Right. Okay, so you can throw the knife a hundred times in the air and, and watch it, and it will always land point first, right? Or throw it against the wall, and it will always land point first. Yeah, okay. So they're using they're using that concept, right? But they're giving it. Um, well, look, they probably don't even need a vibrating alert. Just so you, all they got to do is make it heavier at one mm. corner, where yeah, it doesn't right. have much, um, you know electronics down there, a camera or something like that. So when it's falling, it lands on that corner. Yeah. And that corner can be have like an extra protective lead or titanium or something on the inside that protects it from smashing. Mm. Yeah, well, that's all, that's all right because they were toying with what Gorilla Glass and all this sort of stuff. Mm. Well, that was the rumour, wasn't it? Um, yeah, well, the iPhone 6 was supposed to have Gorilla Glass, but I think it's a little bit heavier, which they probably – because it's a little bit thicker – Mm. But at the same time, I don't think it protects the case. It'll only protect the glass. Yeah, right, yes. The iPhone 4 was the last phone they had that was all glass, back and front. Well, I don't mind the phones being a little bit heavy. You can't have it as light as paper in your hand. Like, you well, know. you don't know it's there. Well, that's right. You, you could just strap it to your ear, you'd be right. You could do it that way. But, but yeah, not when it, you need something heavy. I like, <laughs> for, for want of a better analogy, I want, I'd like something heavy in my hand. So uh, it, it always works better. Yeah, now, well, if you can feel it in your hand, then you know it's there. That's right. Is that right. what you're saying, Glenn? Yes, that's right. <laughs> like to feel it in your hand. You don't have to see it as long as you can feel it. That's so right. since we've gone down the rabbit hole, just to summarise that last story, it's a, 
It's a P med with a vibrator. Uh, yes. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's got a vibrating sensor alert that right. repositions the phone in midair so it lands on a less vulnerable point. There you go. Well, look, move, <laughs> move, moving off for the landing of iPhones on their point, what about another related, maybe, Apple story, uh, the trademark. So Apple Australia has lost their bid to trademark App Store in Australia. So they should. They've lost it everywhere else. Why, why would we be any different? So the... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so arguing App Store did not distinguish Apple services from similar offerings. So I think they're saying that, you know, they've copyrighted, they wanted the, the App Store name copyrighted. Justice Yates of the Sydney Federal Court backed the trademark's office decision and ruled the term was not specifically associated with Apple's offerings and its application for trademarks should therefore be rejected. Apple had argued that it had, charged, it had changed the definition of the term through the release of its iPhone, despite application and app existing in common use before Apple's products was released. Well, I suppose they would have been. Um, Yates said today, uh, or whenever he brought his judgment down, that app, in using both terms in 2008 announcement of its first iPhone, they had not been using the terms in any new or otherwise special way. So fair enough. He, um, he, he, he reckoned that that was good. He dismissed Apple, told, the, uh, told Apple to pay the court cost, and away you go. Amazon had a similar action taken against them over the similar use as the Amazon App Store. Uh, and the lawsuit was dropped by Apple. They must have come to their senses. But uh, I don't know. App Store, can you? You can't. Can you? Can you can't. You, can it's you, a generic you, term. It is. Seriously. But, but I suppose the layer argument was, was it really a generic term back then? Was there applications before the iPhone? Well, I suppose it was. Software uh, could have well, been an application. Microsoft has always called their programs applications. Yeah, well, they own the trade. They should get the trademark. <laughs> <laughs> but application is a generic term. Mm. Yeah, well, yeah, that, but so Apple is a generic term. You know, how do they? How do they? Oh, I don't know. Who knows? It gets too complicated, doesn't it? But yeah. anyway, it's been rejected. They went for it, and they got told to shove off. Yeah. Well, they, you know, you've got to go for it. Well, yeah, well, you've got to protect it. Try and protect it. Uh, no great loss, I don't reckon. I reckon they just move on. Who cares? It's App Store people. Look, everyone. They don't need to trademark. Everyone knows when you say App Store, you're talking about Apple. Yeah, pretty right. much. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's completely, um, you know, you know, it's associated completely with Apple. Mm. If when you say, "Hey, I'm going to go get something from the App Store," I'm not talking about. No one's going to think, "Oh, you must be talking about Microsoft." Yeah, and I think automatically they think Apple. And look, I do think Google's gone down the right track, and you know, well, Shane being a, a tech head and also with an Android, but I'm saying more mums and dadsies. They'll, they, 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 I don't think they would even use terminology App Store for their Android. I'm pretty sure, you know, they're accessing the Play Store all the time. I think that just, I think Play Store grows into a normal everyday Android's. Uh, what did that happen? Vocabulary. People will always say, "I'm going to the Google App Store." Yeah. What do you use, What's Shane? Android App Store. Are you, are you in conversation? You just, I'm going to the Play Store. Uh, yeah, usually because that's what it's called. Um, and I think Google called it the Play Store intentionally to avoid all the whole confusion around App Store and any other name. Yeah, well, that, yeah, that's right. That's right. And I think because like even they didn't want to play second fiddle, even if Apple can't, you know, they they, they can't. They're not allowed to trademark it, but they're still using it. Everyone, as Eric said, everyone refers. Everyone knows that App Store yeah. refers to Apple. So why would Google want to keep that name anyway? It's, it's like so, in the old days when everyone said, "Oh, can you take give take uh, give me a Xerox of that page?" Everyone knows you talk about photocopying. Yeah, that's right. You're yes. always marrying the brand, you know. Yeah. Um, when someone says, "Pass me Kleenex," you know you're talking about tissues. Mm, yeah. You know, there's still a few eighty-year-olds that do say that i'll take a xerox of that yeah they're all dying now <laughs> yes i haven't heard you, take xerox? you don't hear young people or anyone below about 80 say that do you you don't say it, do you eric you say i don't say give me a give me a photocopy is what i say yeah. or give me a copy yeah or, or get out of my face <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, get out of my face and while we're out of it get that photocopy done for yeah, that's me right <laughs> and you're doing nothing that's right and, and not a photocopy of your bum that's <laughs> right you bloody generation x slacker <laughs> All right. Uh, Shane, what have you found for us through the week? Uh, what I will start with is it was uh, it was a story came out, I think it was fairly recently, that shareholders have approved Microsoft CEO's $84 million pay package. A peanut. Yeah. And the Dallas compensation consists mostly of grants from Microsoft stock, 
Microsoft shares have risen more than 32% during the tenure to trade at $48.27 on Wednesday. The stock reached a multi-year high of $50.05 on November 14, so I guess he's earning his money. Um, Nadella also rem they had a, like a town hall meeting where Nadella also reminded the attendees that 2015 will mark the 40th anniversary of Microsoft's founding and addressed the matter of diversity in the company's workforce. And the article kind of fi finishes off by sort of saying that an FBR capital markets analyst, Daniel Ives, I wonder if he's any relation to Johnny, uh, said that Nadella looked like a man intent on restoring Microsoft to its former greatness. Seems to be doing pretty well. So I'm just, I've just done a quick calculation with the aid of my iPhone calculator. $84 million pay package. Now, this is probably not going to be a year, is it? Or is this a year? Yeah. yeah. A year? Maybe. Yeah, think All right, we'll say, we'll call it a year because that's, uh, geez, it probably would be, you know. They're so rich, that Microsoft people. Now, that works out to be just just a tickle over $9,500 an hour. That's yeah, all right, maybe. isn't it? Hey, that's all right. That'd get you a little pencil shaking, Eric, wouldn't it? Doing that tax return. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You, my fee would be like at least half that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He goes, well, I'm, I'm lucky I don't get RSI from writing all those zeros, Sashin. Well, look, you've got to don't forget, too, he's got to, the stock, he's got to perform. Microsoft oh, yeah. have got to make, got to reach certain, so a lot of that's, uh, all these headlines, stuff, everyone gets a bit excited and they start thinking, oh, that's not fair, people are starving in Africa, how dare he get paid that much? But you've got to understand, there's, a lot, there's many, many hurdles he has to overcome before he gets anything like mm. that. And I suppose, like, you know, you mentioned Africa and all this sort of stuff and people starving, and I think if, if you were with it, say of that kind of thought train where you say, yeah, that's too much money, what about the starving people in Africa? Well, could I just be as, uh, as upfront to suggest to you that, the, that if it wasn't for Bill Gates making... That's right, and, no, I agree with you. Yeah, and, and getting all this, thing, all, all this thing to be so prosperous and whatever. Like, he was the richest man in the world, and so now he's fighting polio, eradicating he's polio. He's giving it back. Yeah, that's he's right. giving it all back. Mate, he's, not, he's not leaving his kids very much. That's right. Really. So he's going to leave him more than what most people will ever earn in their lifetime. Yeah. But compared to what he's got, it's a pittance. Yeah, so I'm just saying that without uh, him, say, paying himself and, you know, the company doing so well, and you might have That's thought right. he was greedy back then, you know, getting probably $50 million and his worth was $50 billion or something. Well, he's now he's given it all back and he but wouldn't have been in right. And a lot of these guys do. Yeah. You know, they give it all back. They don't know, you know how many boats can you ski behind? You don't need, you don't need it. You do good with it. And you've got to remember one thing for all the communists out there. Without a rich employer, you can't have rich employees. Very simple. Yeah, that's right. But I think it's, uh, yeah, I think it's, um, yeah, good on him, as you said. High, high good stress. Luck. Good luck. If he, mm. he's, he's a self-made man, this, this, uh, this guy at Microsoft, the new guy. Uh, worked his way f up, up to the top. Uh, he's got lots of hurdles to meet before he gets anywhere near that $84 million. And good luck to him. The stock's, like I said, it's gone up 30 or 40% since he, he's been at the helm. Um, you know, it was well, when when uh, what Baldy Bormer was there for ten years. The stock didn't move from twenty five dollars mm. for ten years. Yeah. Now, well, why didn't he get fired? Well, we, what, well, because he was there from the start, wasn't it? He was well, a bit so of a what? bit of a bit of a job for yeah, the boys. So, so if all the communists are going to complain. They should complain about the fact that they kept him there for ten years and the stock mm. never moved. Well, now he's running a basketball team into the ground. Yeah. Well, so. good luck with that. <laughs> Oh, I, I did yeah. some um, additional research to try and compare his wages with other CEOs. Couldn't find what I was looking for, but his base wage is one point two million. His previous job with Microsoft, he was on just under. He was about six hundred thousand doing whatever he was doing. Barmer's base wage was seven hundred thousand. So he's already base wage wise, he's already what five six hundred thousand mm. dollars more than. What Barmer was getting before That's the right, stock but he's, added, but he's also added billions to the to the pockets of the shareholders as well, where mm. Barmer never yeah. did. Look, I no. think with all the money and all the money that Microsoft do have, and just going back to say Windows 8, my tablet experience, I can't see why they they can't just go sit down and go, uh, okay, uh, iPad's got a magazine app, they've got a, a, a RSS app, and you know got all these apps. They pick pick the top ten Apple apps. Now, I want you guys, it is, it is 500 million, yeah. just go and make them. Yeah, just go. Just go yeah. and make, make them. Make them better. Yeah, or just make them because yeah. another thing I didn't compete. find. Compete, basically compete. Yeah, in the app store, I couldn't find a magazine app. I haven't looked yeah. hard, but, you know, I haven't yeah. found a magazine well, app. But it's, the thing is, if you type in 
magazine, you should be able to find something. If it was there, you would have found it. I found a magazine app. It took you to how to uh, purchase and subscribe. A magazine. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, to have it thrown over your fence. Yeah, to actually purchase a physical one. But I want the electronic one. And there's, I, I, to date, I haven't found it. But I'll, yeah. I'll keep yeah, looking. Look, right, yeah. look, look, this guy will smarten them up. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. But, um, you know, the Windows, Windows 8 selling now. He's got all the bugs out of it. Windows 10. I've got Windows 10, by the way, just on the... Up and up. Yeah, and that what download right. of that? I put it on a virtual machine. Yeah, uh, it's um, it seems to be a cross between seven and eight. Yes, very yes. quick, very 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 fast, mm. faster than Windows eight. To me, Windows eight is the Windows Vista. Oh no! Oh look, yeah, yeah. it is. Oh, mate, wait, you download Windows ten and put on a test machine, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah, well, I have I put it onto a virtual machine. But mm. uh, look, I might not be. I want to put it onto a standalone machine. I think I'll get its true, true. Yeah, yeah you will. You'll get feel. its true. I think you yeah. But uh, yeah, so there you go. And uh, you know, uh, Steve Jobs refused to get paid. Yeah, he only right. got a dollar a year, but that's right. he was earning billions in mm. in. Um, but there's what you call, uh, look, in uh, stock options and. Um, you know, dividends or whatever. Yeah, and look, when you're when you're earning that much money, eighty four million, you can only fly around the world. At once at a time, you know. You can only sit in one plane at a time. You can only do these that's things right. once. And, and well, he had, yeah, that's it. He had one plane, he had one boat, and he had his favourite Merc. Yeah, and that's, that's you know. It. And these these people look, and this is why Bill has probably given away most of his fortune. Is he's, he's done everything? There's nothing that he cannot do. The only thing what left for he, him yeah, to do. What could he possibly need? Right, yeah. he's put he's put upwards of a hundred billion already in his fund. Right, yeah. that's fighting polio and AIDS and malaria and everything else. And he's still outside of that, worth another sixty billion. Yeah, it's massive. Uh, and you know, it's, that's just you know, good luck to him. Yeah, and the only thing that money can't buy is is, is happiness. And I suppose to see him, he gets now he's getting fulfilment out of giving his money away, maybe to help a sick child. It makes him feel good. Well, good. Look, he, I think Bill Gates has never been really after the money anyway. He mm. just so happens that that's what happened. If you yeah. do something well, you're going to get rich, aren't you? That's right. Now, Aussie telcos are struggling with the IP version 6 adoption. So the IP 6v6 transition is critical to the internet's future as the network gets closer to running out of the 4 billion unique IP addresses available under the current IP v4 naming system. Tell now, me something. Hmm. Why are we running out of IP addresses? Because there are mathematics, the numbers are infinite, right? You, if you say count from 1... To the end, you will not get to the end. No, it's, it's infinite. So why are they running out of IP address? Because they're based on numbers. I don't get it. Yeah, but why they're don't based... they just say instead of having a you know one nine three dot one six eight dot one hundred dot one hundred, which is what twelve numbers? Mm. Why don't you just add another one to the end of that? Well, I think that's what they're doing. But they're well, adding... no, IPv six is, is it's all these letters and numbers. It's crap. The well, uh, no, well, IPv four is infinite. It's, it's, it's only. It's only a thirty. It's only based on a thirty-two bit. I don't know if it's thirty-two or sixty-four bit, but it's not infinite. That's why obviously they're they're running out. But I was under the impression that they were not necessarily going to fix the problem, but at least stem the flow by the fact that everyone's got a router that's got NAT on it. So all you really need is an IP into your building or home or business or whatever, and then you've got another set of IPs that don't actually aren't in, included in this whole, you know. A lot of IPs that are running out. Mm. Yeah, so whatever it is, like at the IPv4 is what made up of four sets of three sets of numbers, four sets of three nup, if you know what I mean. So yes. So I suppose that it, like you got to think. Or well, I don't know. I haven't. I can't for the life. I don't know, probably wouldn't know how to extrapolate that out to see how many actual numbers there are in the in the in that whole potential range. But whatever it I is, I have no idea. But, but I'm just surprised that they're running out. Well, whatever it is, they're running out. That's right. Uh, the Asia Pacific region ran out of addresses addresses in 2012, uh, because I suppose don't forget, like each country is probably given their own set as well. Uh, so, yes, they are. so then if say uh, America starts going hammer and tong with IP addresses, well, their set might run out. So then they've got to start. Well, what do they do? What do they do? I suppose they can grab another another few hundred thousand from China. I'm getting feedback from the um, lounge here saying that I. Sound like I'm in a hallway, and someone says I sound like I'm in a bathroom. No, you sound okay. Sound yeah. right. Yeah. 
You sound all right to you guys? Yeah, yeah. All right. Maybe uh, you guys stop watching the stream in the toilet. <laughs> well, look, I'll just... <laughs> Getting too much echo. I'll just twiddle with these leads here again. I just looked it up. IPv4 uses a 32-bit 4-byte address system, and that does have a limit of um, 4... Well, Four, something four, like two to the power of 32. It's the same reason why um, 32-bit computers could only use uh, four gig of RAM. They couldn't register any more than that. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah that's true. Actually, they used less than four. I had um, the computer at the office before I put a 64-bit operating system on it. Could only use three, three four gigs. Or something. Three of yeah, three point two of the four gigs. Uh, but the MacBook. Pro that I've got here now uses all 16. Thank you very much. Well, I'll tell you, like talking about uh, running out of numbers, something else that ran out of numbers, uh, YouTube. The YouTube video, <laughs> Gangnam Style, has has been viewed that many times that the YouTube counter would have stopped if they did not intervene. So the YouTube, uh, so it's, it's been the most watched ever has been viewed more than 2,147,483,647 times. Now, apparently, that was the maximum number of views. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, what clown <laughs> sat down and typed that in for a maximum? Well, I'll tell yeah. you. I'll tell you why. Uh, because YouTube, YouTube's counter previously used a 32-bit integer. Oh, which, there you go. Which means the maximum possible views it would count was what I just mentioned. YouTube now uses a 64-bit integer for its video counter, which means videos have a maximum viewer count of 9.22 quin trillion. Well, that's heaps. Now, <laughs> now, just to give you an idea of even how long it is to say that number, the exact number... And I'll give you the exact number. So when it hits this number, YouTube will have to go to something else. Uh, it'll be a while. I don't think game is that is that going to be this good. But it's nine quintillion, two hundred and twenty-three quadrillion, three hundred and seventy-two trillion, thirty-six billion, eight hundred and fifty-four million, seven hundred and seventy-five thousand eight hundred and eight. Brilliant. There well you done. Go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well read. <laughs> How is that for a number? That is a number. Small yeah. change. Now, yeah, so Gangnam Style. Yeah, what a, what a massive video that's been. What a massive video. It's but, as massive as Kardashian's butt. Yeah, it is. Isn't that ridiculous? Oh, we've gone over that. <laughs> yeah, we've, gone, we've gone down yeah. that road. Let's not go yeah. there again. It makes me ill. <laughs> they would have very hairy children. <laughs> she gets that there. Uh, okay. Now, um, Eric, did you have any other stories? Did you have another one? No, I don't. All right. Uh, well, what can we talk about, Shane? Have you got another one? I do. I have one more of my own. Hollywood heavyweights fear Sony hack and leaks. Uh, it happened uh, a week or two ago, but the story, there was kind of an addition to the story as recent as today, I think. A hacking group calling itself Guardians of Peace nice. brought down the Hollywood studio's corporate email and leaked five films in a slew of sensitive personal data, and a slew of sensitive personal data, personnel data even, including a spreadsheet allegedly containing salaries of some 6,000 employees and top executives. The Sony Corp unit denounced the hacker's brazen attack and is working with law enforcement authorities to determine how the hackers got access to file systems. Staff had to find workarounds Inside to do their job. jobs while... Yeah, I reckon. Staff had to uh, find workarounds to do their job while the technology systems were coming back, pe coming back up piecemeal. Sony Pictures employees, Sony at Sony Pictures employees could pay only with cash as of Wednesday because credit card systems weren't up yet. Visitors were being issued handwritten badges by security people. Course, Teams please. from the FBI, uh, Sony, and FireEye Incorporated, a Silicon Valley cybersecurity company, are uh, cooperating with criminal um, with, with the criminal probe. Uh, of the incident. By Wednesday, some of the investor investigators believe that the Sony attack appeared to be the work of North Korea-linked hackers that attacked South Korean television and banking websites in 2013 because some of the code that they found was um, identical, pretty much. Then the article just goes on to sort of discuss the pros and cons of knowing everybody else's salary. 
Who cares about people's salaries? Is that big a deal? Yeah, that's all. Who gives a rat? Yeah, like that's just the movies. Just give me the movies. Like, who cares about the salary? Well, that's why like, communists <laughs> hack in because they hate it. When people have got money, they hate it. Oh, show us your money. Oh, I don't like you. You got yeah more, more money. than me. That's right. Who cares? Good luck with them. Yeah, yeah. Who cares about the money? Oh, that's the, that's the last thing. But yeah, that's that's pretty dodgy, eh? Like, uh, I, I don't know. Could you imagine them sitting there going, oh, I heard a story as well that uh, that it, it affected uh, a couple of weeks ago or something. They've been hacked all this year. You know, well, since oh, for ages they've been getting hacked. Remember the PlayStation yeah, yeah. got hacked? They've been getting, they're getting, been getting bent over and jammed. But uh, it, could you imagine that they've, they've had to issue uh, handwritten passes and everything? You know, they, go, they say to the young intern over there, young, young fella who's 16, can you go and write out some badges? You'll go, writing? What's that? No? <laughs> yeah, writing. Hello. Yeah, hello. What, what, what's your keyboard? Yeah, where, where's the computer? But uh, what's a pen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you do with this thing? What's this thing with the, the dark stuff down the center? I don't know. Oh, look, it's running all over my hands. Oh, help <laughs> me! Is, am I going to die? <laughs> That's ink, you moron. Yeah. Uh, now, that I also heard that, that during a recent attack. That the, they had an attack on Windows computers, and apparently it was just wiping data and all this sort of stuff. So uh, the Sony had got rid of the Windows computers and just bought new ones. Well, I don't know why they couldn't be confident that they could get rid of the virus or just chuck the hard drive out. But apparently, I read a story that said they just bought all new computers. So go figure <laughs> that one. Like be days. All right. And this is why we're paying twenty bucks at the movies. <laughs> That's right. It's not because of um, yeah um, piracy. <coughs> it's because of that. All right. Now, look, I want to, I want to t- talk to you about an app that came across my desk, and it's called the Sign My Phone app. Now, you can have a look at this. It's free in the iTunes store uh, and also in the Android store as, as, as it goes. So you can download it. And it's a, I think if you want to purchase, it's an in-app purchase, 99 cents or $1.29, whatever it is, get you the full unlocked version, gives you a couple of new features. But what it does is apparently... Uh, you know, when you're out at an event, you know, and you, you want to get an autograph. If you're one of the little fanboys out there or fangirls, you want to get an autograph of, I don't know, um, Vince Surf while he's, uh, while he's hanging around the, the, the back of the server room and you haven't got a bit of paper and you haven't got a pen, you don't know what a pen is, so you don't have a pen, so you rush out to him and, say, and what he can do, you take a selfie and then he can just sign on the, on the phone screen and then that, that that's superimposes over the So how does he sign? Would you give him a little pen or...? No, just or with, does he start with his fingernail? Just with his finger, yeah. Right. Just, just with his so you get, his, you get his DNA as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. You get all that, and then North Korea will get into your phone and, and then That's hack it. into the military. Before we know, you've got his fingerprint, and then he can open his phone because you've got his fingerprint. That's, That's not right. Gonna work. Yeah. So anyway, so look, it's a good little, it's a good little app if you're into autographs. So go and have a look at that. Uh, I don't think I've uh, got anything else to tell you about. It really developed by, th- well, yeah, it was developed by three young Sydney tech heads. So good on yous. Uh, that's that's so uh, it's a, it's an Aussie product. So go and have a look at it for for free anyway. Go and look at start. I off think with selfies free. have taken over the autographs. If you've got a selfie with you in the picture with your the person that you idolise, look up to, follow, whatever you want to call it, then isn't that the autograph? Because there it is. There's the proof. Yeah, but then you can have the signature, have that person's signature superimposed over the photo. Yeah, but so that's a bit. I don't. He sorry. signed it. Don't want to be cynical, but that's not going to work. Yeah, you that, get the best of both worlds then. Yeah, it'll work. I think it'll. I think that it won't work. Oh, well, look. If I if I went down the street and I saw Elvis, I'd say, "Hey, E, give us a photo, <laughs> mate." If you saw Elvis, you'd be a billionaire. Yeah, well, I would be if I took a photo. Then, I, and I, if I got his signature tw- forty years after he died, I'd be. A, a and then when you walk away, what do you, what do you say? You say, "Thank you very much." Uh, Thank you, E. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> so anyway, so Sign My Phone allows fans to capture the moment the autograph, combine the two and instantly upload to social media. Gone are the days of carrying around pen and paper. Um, yeah, Who crazy. does that anyway? Well, people do. <laughs> These like, days, the young people, they don't know what a pen is. <laughs> I know, but people people do. Like, uh, all, the old, all the old farts, like look, you I, I would probably carry a pen and paper. Can you sign my book? I said, look, I sat down the other night just watching the music channel and I, no, I was watching the, the Mo- Molly Meldrum biography, you know, and I'm thinking, did you see that? It was on Max. No, music, I didn't watch it. Music Max. That was good. Do you like Meldrum? He mumbles too much. He frustrates me. Oh, he's mumbling more now after he's, <laughs> he's smack on the head. He's excellent. Yeah. But, uh, but look, I sat down and watched that and I'm just thinking, you know, oh, you know, like these people, some of these guys are not going to be with us anymore. Wouldn't it be great to have an autograph? And I just thought about writing to him and saying, can you send me a picture with your autograph? I thought, why not? You know, it'd be good to have a wall. I think I think that I, I, I can see the value of what, what this app's trying to do. 
So I, I think it's a it's a good All idea. right, Glenn. Yeah? I well, believe have you. Have I won you over? No. no not really. <laughs> I believe you, but you haven't won me over. All right, so sign my phone. Go and have a look at it. And look, uh, the guy sent me some uh, some upgrade codes, but I don't know how to use them. <laughs> so if I work them out, I've got to, I'll have to ask him. I've tried to uh, use them. I've asked Michael from the Aussie Max Zone how to use them. He says he doesn't know. So um, I don't know. I'm going to have to ask him, see how we do. I, I could redeem it from the iTunes store, but I couldn't get that to transfer over to the to unlock the app. Oh, I don't know. Like to the, the full thing. But anyway, it's good enough in the free version. Go and have a, go and have a look. Uh, sign my phone. All right. Now, let's have a look. <clears throat> what else we've got going here, kicking around? Because I've got a few more stories. Now, as we mentioned earlier, Perth to uh, uh, Will's been struck down. Again, he's, he's got terrible luck with the technology, hasn't he? One, His computer's got a bowler. Yeah, one day it's uh, it's his CPU. He's bought a new computer. I don't know if he's put that together yet. I think he I probably know. not. Probably not. No. But anyway, uh, the his internet's down. And as we mentioned at the top of the show, Perth to Singapore Singapore cable has been severed. The uh, SEA ME WE three cable has been cut. No, no details on how. It's just. Uh, it's just been cut. Now, this was cut on November 30, about 11.45 Western Australian time. So what's that? It's about... Oh, Normally just... a fishing boat, aren't they, that cut those things? I thought these things just dangled around the bottom of the ocean. No. They just no. dangle around the middle of it. They tend to run on the, on the, on the, um, on the, on the um, bottom. Yeah. The, the cut is believed to be in the, in the Perth to Jakarta section. Uh, the two fibre strand cable has a maximum capacity of 480 gig a second, and a ship has arrived uh, on the uh, has arrived to fix it. And they reckon it should have been fixed. They, they, this article says it should have been fixed on December two. It's about 39,000 kilometres in length. Uh, oh God, a what? A God, I said that's a long way. It is a long way. The cable's a massive cable. I'll show, I've got a little graphic here for people that are watching on the video. Let's have a look. There it is. Now. Now, this article goes on and on, blah blah blah. Now, look, it's it's been prone to a lot of, lot of uh, outages. It got here July two thousand and five. A portion of the cable was located uh, thirty five kilometres south of Karachi. That was that was uh, oh, destroyed. Oh, that was who built finished? this cable? The MBN people, probably. On December twenty six two thousand, the link the, the link was severed, causing major disruption. Disruption was caused by seven point one magnitude earthquake. Off the coast of Taiwan, January 30, 2008, uh, the, uh, a ship's anchor off Egypt's Alexandra coast is thought to have cut the cable. You know, and it goes on. December 2008, the cable was severed again. Uh, December 12, 2008. I think it's time to replace the cable. <laughs> well, something's going on, isn't it? On oh, no. And then January 2010, December 2010, the cable was again severed uh, between the uh, Alex. Alexandria and Sesimbra segments. The fault was th- later located 31 kilometres from the Alexandria cable station and January 2013 was again severed. And the rep- you reckon it's um, sabotage? Well, I s- don't know. You know, here, conspiracy theory here. I'll put my tin hat on. Could be. If, if it's close to the coastline all the time, you think, yeah. oh, maybe someone's trying to cut it. Well, maybe. Just like, just to, just to be annoying. Yeah, you know, just well, out of curiosity, I've just done a speed test because obviously I'm in Perth. From here to, um, I think I, I don't think I got Jakarta, but I got somewhere in Indonesia. It was a 304 millisecond ping, but the download was 6.9 megabits, which was actually faster than what I got when I did the um, same test from here to the Gold Coast before the show. Yeah, right. That just goes to prove that even with a cut cable, Australian speed is still deficient. Shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're slow as. Look, um, the, the, oh, just on a side note, I never didn't want to bring it in as a, as a full story because I'm sick of talking about it. I've been sick of talking about it since 2007. But the, the NBN's released another... I know, not on it. I checked yeah. you, you're not on it either. <laughs> Neither am I. Yeah. Another thing. But oh, surprisingly, Rabina is on it, but only in greenfields. Yeah, so, new development. Yeah. So if you, buy, if you want to build a house, then you're sweet. But not a house. You'd have to... Is it a house? You can't just... No, greenfields means any development, any new development, you'll get it in. They'll put it in for you. So if you buy a block of dirt... Yeah. ..that's in a new development, not a block of dirt in an existing development, you know, you knock the house oh, down. Right. So if you're building a house in a subdivision that's got... It's just no houses there, the road's right. been laid, it's a cul-de-sac, 
bang, you'll get you'll you'll get it. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, there we go. Uh, so, so build a house. Yeah. Well, the, I, I did. I looked it up. It was I don't know Rabina. I don't know some Rabina. I don't know some unit. They turned out to be like little townhouse unit things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, yeah, I'm not gonna, never going to be living in them. Get stuffed. Uh, so I just have to wait. Now, oh, here's some good news. Did you know that one in six guys, one in six men, are colour blind? Yes, I do. Yes. I might be one of them. I reckon my my wife has accused me of being colour blind. Has she? I told her to put her blue dress away when it was red. That's pretty bad. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, it comes and goes. It comes yeah. and goes. Now, apparently, well, I've got a little test then. Can, right you, can you see any numbers in that? This is white. I know that. So if you can see a number in that, you're not colour blind in the blue. Okay, reds. I can see a number in that. What number? Six. Yes. I can't. I, for, <laughs> life, I for life of me, cannot see the number six in Are that. Are you for real? Yeah, I can't it's see right it. It's right there, mate. There it is. It's in orange. No, it I doesn't can't. stand out to me either. Once, no. once other family members pointed it out, I went, "Oh yeah, there it is," but I couldn't see it just straight I, off the bat. I still can't. I cannot. Well, you're see both it. useless. But anyway, and blind. The the, the, the <laughs> uselessness is is coming to an end. Did you know there was a, a and which which I'm going to look up? You know, because I'm I'm you, you sit down every day and, and you know Eric, you sit down and all you hear on the radio is all these minority groups and they're shouting about and they're getting what they want. Yeah, I know what you're saying. You, yeah. Let's go. And you know that there's a colour blindness awareness group. That's it. Yeah. I mean Parliament. No, I want equal rights for colour blindness. I don't. I want the the red green spectrum ruled outlawed. I just want green, no brown. Stuff the brown. Right, so, Get so, rid of it. So when you when you're driving, in a traffic lights, can you tell the difference between red and green? Yes, I can. Like that. Red one's on top. That's. <laughs> yeah, but if you didn't, no, yes. what I'm saying is, if you didn't know red was on top, would you know that was red? Yes. Or I can see that because the bottom is light green. I think the problem, for me, the problem is really greens and browns. And, right. So and there's, there's, there's grades of colour blindness. And blues and purples. Yeah. Yeah. So right. anyway, I tech from the universe. So you could, you could have been, in your younger days, you could have been going out with a, like an African and you wouldn't have known. Exactly. I would have thought she was a Sambo. Yeah, you yeah. would have thought, look, Mum, it's my girlfriend. She's been goes to the beach a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a family friendly rating. <laughs> no, I'm being no. serious. I'm not trying to be a I'm not trying to be a pig. No, no, no. Well, you can tell what's going on I'm there. Trying to be funny, but I'm not trying to be a yeah. pig. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's just that I can't see. So, uh, you know, you hold a blue and a, a green and a brown dress up, and right. if, if it's not light green, it's dark green. Well, right. that's so I would well, never say. Here's a tip for the ladies: if you ever hold up a dark green dress and a brown dress, wouldn't matter. I'm not dating you. Yeah, but what, no one should be wearing that shit. Now, yeah, because you just can't. You're yeah. like a tree. But, <laughs> <laughs> going in camouflage. <laughs> Where did she go? Yeah, don't Where's take. She She's in the garden somewhere. <laughs> don't take her for a walk in the forest. You'll lose her. I oh, know you see this. Oh Jesus Christ! That's <laughs> all right. I'm going to stop oh. it right there. Okay, so iTech University of East Angela of East Ang 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 Anglia A N G L I A Anglia. Anglia East Anglia based company Spectral Edge alters colours frame by frame in this new TV that they've developed without spoiling them for non colour blind people. Finally, equality is coming. Uh, the technology could be used on video games. Great, I'll be able to play them. Yeah, I'm yeah. oh, not that bad. But the condition affects uh, one in twelve men and one in two hundred women with red, green colour blindness. Oh, women get it too. Yeah, yeah. According to the Spectral Edge website, iTech gently modifies colours in images in such a way that colourblind observers enjoy both improved visibility as well as the overall appearance of the picture. So with careful design using mathematical perception models, we are able to remap colours to maximise discrimination. And that's what it's all about, people. Discrimination for colourblind people as the same as minimising the strength of the effect of non-colourblind people. The company says those who are not colourblind do not mind the colour change, that it is slight. It also said there is no noticeable lag as pictures are remapped in real time. So at the moment, they've only got a 720p resolution TV, but they're working on the 1080. Now, in the show notes, as always, show notes, as always, at uh, aussietechheads.com.au, 
is uh, forward slash podcast is a, a little colorblind test if you are interested. You can go here's through a, and... Here's a question for mm. the viewers. If you had didn't have a sense of smell, would it affect your taste buds and your yes. appetite? And if that, that being the case, would you be more likely to be overweight or normal weight or even underweight? I think it would affect your... Appetite, because how many times do you go and smell something? You go, and you, oh, and I'm you get, hungry. And it, you know, and it, that's right. It, mm. it, it, um, it, you know, it motivates your those little the glands and your senses, right? Yeah, and I suppose it would also it make you salivate. So therefore, yes. you're, you're just hungry. That's right. Yeah, and, and and as soon as you salivate, it means that you're ready for food. Yes, <laughs> gimme, gimme, gimme. Uh, yeah, look, I, I don't know. I so think... you reckon if you could, or does it? You know how when people say when some when you're blind your hearing's really good. Yep. Right. So I wonder if you you have a, don't have a sense of smell. Your taste buds are really good. Yeah. Well, I, would no. have, I think all your taste buds can do is distinguish sweet and sour, I believe, and it's your smell that kind of does the rest. Right. Yeah. Right. Really. Yeah, but but that's saying, all I remember from. So your smell works in conjunction with your taste buds. <laughs> But in saying that, taste yeah. is a sense, is it not? It's a, a, it, in its, its own sense. right, yeah. Yeah, so but, it's, yeah, well, well, like I was saying, like if you're deaf, that's your right. eyes are really good. Well, that's what I'm led to believe. Good. And, and if you're blind, your ears are really good. Yeah, well, that's what I'm led to believe. Another sense picks up and tries to... Comp- Another one doubles up to overcompensate to compensate for the for lost one. one. That's right. So yeah. I'm wondering whether the, your taste buds then or your sense of taste would be so much better than the average bear because you don't have a sense of smell... Because, see, my theory was this, and the reason, there's a reason for this question, is that I, if somebody didn't have a sense of smell, I think, well, how can you get an appetite? You think, oh, you'd be pretty skinny because you wouldn't be eating much. Yeah. You wouldn't. Not, there's nothing to motivate you, oh, yeah, I can't smell anything, what's the point, mm. right? But then on the, on the, but I thought to myself, well, hang on a minute, maybe that person's really fat mm. because their sense of taste is so much more developed that they can't stop eating. Right. Yeah, I can see where you're coming from. But but then also remember when, when you was a little kid and you had to eat peas and pumpkin and stuff and you didn't like it, well, you always had to hold your nose and eat. Yes, that's true. So if you hold your nose and eat... It cuts out your taste. It sort of because reduces you, the effect of the taste, doesn't yeah, it? because you're not sort of, I think, like sucking oxygen in through the air and possibly mixing with the food on the back of your tongue, giving you the taste sensation that we all love. Let's look it up. <laughs> okay. That's yeah, well, so what I'm trying to do now. <laughs> well, look, look, let's move on while you're doing that. And something that's been banned. Can you believe this has been banned in South Korea? Of oh, No less, of, any, of all countries. But the, the innocent little selfie stick. Can you believe yes, it? Yes, I read about that. Yeah. Well, it hasn't been banned exactly, but the South Korea's radio management agency has issued guidelines outlawing the sale of unregistered selfie sticks. How dare people have unregistered selfie sticks? Seriously. The law applies. Who gets around with a selfie stick anyway? I've seen them around here. Really? Yeah, yeah. So you can get good photos of yourself. Oh, you can, but you're not going to walk around with like enough enough, eh? Oh, I've seen them. They're, look, I think they're becoming more and more common. I think they're... Not... Yeah, what? People are pretty self-absorbed if all they do is carry on a <laughs> selfie stick just in case they don't need to take a photo. Might double as a walking stick. Well, if it doubles as something else, like a walking stick... A cane, uh, police, a police baton, a saber, a lightsaber, <laughs> lightsaber. <laughs> um, a um, a jackhammer, a general, a gener- a ge- gen- generic people a, poker, an umbrella. Yeah, you might just want to go around poking people with it. Be a poker, a, a, a cane, a corporal cane. punishment. Yes, or for for vision impaired. A, That's right. Or or upskirt camera. Yeah, could be could be. <laughs> Could be any of those. Uh, but, yeah, but the outlawed, outlawed unregistered ones. Oh, no. The law Look applies to sticks using Bluetooth to remotely trigger a phone to take a picture. The agency said that unregistered sticks may and might interfere with other devices using the same radio frequency. Like, please. You know what they should put in those selfie sticks? Yeah, because you know how it's Bluetooth. Lollies. So it's drawing on your battery, right? So yeah. after a while, because it's always on, and it does suck your battery if the Bluetooth is always connected to another Bluetooth device. It's always on, right? Anytime yeah. you take a photo, you draw the battery again. And a selfie stick is a tube, right? That should have about like 12 AA batteries in there. 
Yeah, right. It's charging your phone at the same time. Yeah, that'd be the go. Or a couple of solar panels you know. or... Should, what yeah, about, oh, well, you could have a solar panel on there. That'll work. What about a telescopic selfie stick? You could yeah, really so get some... it goes in and out. You could really get some um, leverage. Would, and get some a battery pack in there at the very end of it. Like, you know, you probably need like a, like a rechargeable, you know, two double A's or something. Yeah. Put it there with a solar panel which charges your battery, which then charges your phone. We're on to something here. We are. Let's paint Solid it. Solar panel charges the battery, which charges your phone. Patent it. Ring up the office. Patent office tomorrow. Selfie sticks into which smartphones can be slotted to take snaps of their own, blah, blah, blah. Because they use Bluetooth, the devices are considered to be a telecommunications device and must be tested and registered with the South Korean agency that oversees such gadgets. But I don't know. Like Bluetooth's got such a limited range. Like, exactly. Seriously, like, what you're going to set off every camera? Well, how do they set? How do they set off explosives? They set off. They they use a cell signal for that, don't they? They use the actual phone, like a, like a series hmm. of numbers, like a pin or something, and they send that pin to that phone. Right. So it's so it's not the Bluetooth that's doing that. It's that's being sent over the cellular le- network. So it's, so it's not a so it's not a terrorist risk. No. So, but uh, anyway, look, these are the upmarket selfie sticks that are Bluetooth, and. Uh, I don't know how the old ones used to work. What was there a little finger on the end of it or Quite something? Like a cable or something. Yeah, and it just sort of dong the the button. Yeah. Like dong, dong. Not dong. being just plugged into the USB thing, which then triggered the button when you. Mm. But but anyway, look. Um, you should have a look for one, Eric. I think you'd enjoy it. No. <laughs> well, you could be in the pool and take a picture of yourself in the pool. Without yeah, my phone goes in the water, then what's the use? But that's what the selfie stick's for. Then you can just lay it on the outside. But anyway, no. that's good. I could see Shane with one. I could see everyone with one. The selfie no. sticks are a no. great Christmas present. For everyone. Well, you got shares in your selfie stick, <laughs> mate. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> Probably should have. Uh, all right, so that's about the end. Uh, anyone got anything else? I think that's about it. I do. I've just found some stuff Ooh. about oh, that yes. um, taste and smell thing. The human tongue can only detect four basic taste sensations, sweet, sour, bitter and salty, plus a fifth sensation called umami mm. that is stimulated by MSG. All other tastes are a result of a sense of smell. Right. Well, there you go. Mm. Thanks for that. Problem inquiry solved. There you go. Very Thank good. you, sir. Now, you can listen to this show, Aussie Max Zone, and, oh, and don't forget, Obsidian Loft... And the old fart geeks. Uh, you'll find William and Jason hosting those two shows. Obsidian Loft, all about Minecraft, uh, available on iTunes and all good YouTube channels. And also old fart geeks. So they get on there. They've done a couple of episodes now. They're pretty good. They go backwards in time through their memories. God help us. Which, ain't, which isn't <laughs> very good. And, 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 just, and just let go of all their memories of all tech that's, that's gone by their eyes in the last 50, well, 30 years or whatever. All the way, I don't know what they were going back. Well, I go back to the Apple II. That's about as far as I go back. But, uh, yeah, all that's it. The Tempest video game, all that sort of stuff. They, they get on a tangent. They go for it. That's good. So that's on iTunes. You can also listen to on the uh, Aussie Tech Radio 24-7 Shoutcast Radio back-to-back tech shows. Just repeat, just one after the other. Just, just oh, you could just listen all day. It's great. It's great. Uh, tune in anytime. Always on. Always on. And also the Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds, youtube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds, and you'll find on the video on the YouTube, you'll find I, uh, iOS and Android apps of the day on the Facebook, if there's any decent ones. There hasn't been many decent ones lately. That's why they haven't been putting any up. Uh, and that's about all. You can find us, email us, Glenn, Walt, uh, Jason, Eric, Shane with a Y, Glenn at uh, AussieTechEds.com.au. Cool. All right. Uh, all good, boys? Thanks all good. For, thanks for coming in. No well, worries. Good. Thanks for having me. No worries. And uh, good stuff. We'll see you all next time, Christmas soon. So yes. We'll, yeah, good stuff. Uh, looking forward to the break. Looking forward to the cricket to start. Uh, this, yes. Yes, that's good. So the, the first test, which should have been the second test. Uh, but I'm, yes. I'm glad they got all that sorted. I just can't wait for the crickets. Let's hope it's a goodie. All right, so until yes. next time, it's bye from all of us.